Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. If you recall correctly, last episode we stranded three of our Kerbals on Guardian because really we were trying to do too much too fast. We wanted to step up to three man missions and we wanted to make the first stage reusable and we wanted to land on a specific point on Guardian with a, a certain degree of accuracy and in the end we just didn't have the capability with the level 2 launch pad and as such we ran out of fuel on the surface. Trying to do all that reusability and stuff has actually cost us a bunch more money because we've had to launch this rescue mission led by of course Ted Kerman. Ted Kerman to the rescue. He is of course our safe pair of hands. <laughs> He's sort of the safety net of the space program. I don't know what we'd do without him. We've got this rather overbuilt rocket but I wasn't going to risk running out of fuel on this mission for God's sake. Uh, so it is overbuilt and none of it's reusable. Again, I didn't want to waste weight on saving fuel in stages to make it all re I just wanted to get them back home, get all the contracts done, get our money back, and then we can focus on pushing the known boundaries of space travel. So I did play it very safe here. Uh, but you can notice that we've got a few new engines being used here with the new technology we have, and of course with the new launch pad. Um, we're using liquid fuel boosters and such, which are quite expensive, but they give us a lot more thrust to weight uh, in the early stages because if you recall correctly our earlier moon rockets have a bit of trouble getting through the early parts of the atmosphere with the smaller engines um, but this one doesn't have any such trouble although of course the boosters were completely expendable and as such cost us quite a bit of money but without any problems as, as such we do manage to get ourselves all the way out to Guardian with no issues. We do wait a little late for our uh, insertion into orbit we accidentally time what past our maneuver. So we need to head on up to Apoapsis in order to raise our periapsis slightly, then orbit back round again so we can then lower the Apoapsis like so. So yeah, um, we, as I said, we packed a lot of fuel on this and I wanted to get them back as fast as possible. If this screwed up, we would have lost the space program. Like, this would bankrupt us. We have no money at the moment. However, by recovering the science data and the Kerbals, on the mission that we're rescuing, we get something in the region of 500 grand, um, which is more than enough to resume normal operations, uh, so it's quite alright. We do a very inefficient inclination change here, but we had the fuel. Um, we need to use up this stage. I thought, ah, screw it. Let's just, let's just get him home already, goddammit. I think we have a scientist on this mission as well, so he's probably not too happy. Maybe we just tell him it was all, all a routine mission. We're testing our uh, <laughs> rescue capability from the surface of another world. It's all, it's all in the plan. Don't worry about it. It's fine. The worry here isn't so much that uh, they'll run out of life support. They've got loads of life support. It's more that they'll stop working. If you stuff Kerbals into a tiny capsule for too long, uh, they go stir-crazy with the USI colonization. We almost actually hit the lander with the ejected transfer stage there. Uh, but thankfully, it's a near miss. That would have been embarrassing if we killed all of them with the transfer stage. It would have also been an absolute disaster. But sure enough, we land about 300 meters away and we start getting our Kerbals out, grabbing all the scientific data and just jumping in. We are sliding down the hill because this is a bit of unforgiving terrain, but we managed to head ourselves across without any problems. There we go. I still have to get used to this sort of gravity. It is stronger gravity on Solitude, not on Solitude, on uh, Nemesis and Guardian than the Moon, and certainly Minmus. They're both 0.2 Gs. The Moon is 0.16 Gs. Minmus is something in the region of 0.08. I'm not 100% sure about that. I would need to check. As you see though, we brought two crew cabins so we can fit all four of our Kerbals nice and snug and then without really spending any time on the surface, we just get them straight on up into orbit. I'm sure they've uh, spent enough time huddled in that three-man capsule together. They've got a bit more room to stretch their legs now with the, the spare lander can. We switch the lights on as well, just because, well, it looks it looks pretty with KS3P. Uh, apparently the KS3P developer was very flattered by my comments about the mod, but it is an amazing mod. Uh, just add, it just adds post-processing effects and bloom, and it just makes such a massive difference. You wouldn't know it, but just such a small thing with such a tiny impact on performance, and it really does make the game look so much more beautiful. Someone also told me that you can right-click on an apoapsis or periapsis marker uh, to have it stay there so you don't have to keep mousing over it. Somehow, I've been playing this game for years, but there are still things that I don't know. 
<laughs> so I didn't realize you could right click on a periapsis and just have it stay, have the numbers stay up without having to continually keep mousing over it to check it. Um, probably would have been good to know earlier. But hey, you know, you learn new things every day. I still don't even know how to orient your Kerbals. Don't you, don't you, don't you hold something to orient your Kerbals differently when they're on EVA? Um, yeah, I still don't even know how to do that, but hey. Also, is it just me, or does Nemesis look like it has two red eyes here? Look. <laughs> because Games Links finally gave me the configs for distant object enhancement, giving the distant you know, little pricks of light uh, in the distance, which are planets, of course, the actual colours associated with the atmospheres or surfaces of those worlds. And we've got a reddish brown and a red planet in the distance. It looks like Nemesis has got two red eyes. Maybe Nemesis cursed the mission. Maybe it's jealous because we went to Guardian instead of Nemesis. I don't know. But we managed to touch down safely with a little bit of a skydive from our scientist because the lander can was smashed in the landing. Well, that was certainly much closer than I would have liked, but hopefully we won't have any such disasters again, because now we have the level 3 launch pad, and of course we have quite a considerable sum of money in around the region of almost 600,000 funds. So yeah, uh, we shouldn't run the risk of going bankrupt again. So let's head into R&D. We've got 551.6 science to spend. Let's see what we should spend it on. Heat and management systems. Nope. Hydroponics. Eh, we're not looking at growing food in space anytime soon. Precision engineering. Get a new relay antenna. Which I think we might need. I don't know if our current relay antennas are actually any good. Um, because we started with... What is our current antenna? I don't know. Is it basic science? Right there it is. High gain antenna. Short range dual purpose communication that can handle either direct communication or short range relays. Oh, maybe the relay is too short a range? I don't know. Antenna type relay. No, it's uh it should be working. I don't know. Maybe I, I just oversaw something. You guys need to tell me in the comments uh, as to why we couldn't get signal to our landing stage. Anyway, uh, so that'll be a good one to grab, though. We also get the science storage device, which should be good. That's great for returning uh, science from other places. Much smaller than the science storage unit. Uh, get some ladders. The mobile processing lab. That'd be good for the station. I don't know when we're actually going to be building that station. Around Guardian, it won't be for a little time yet, that's for sure. Uh, could grab some more reaction control systems, wouldn't go amiss. Advanced landing. 3.75 meter land, yeah, but again, stuff we're not really going to need. Advanced aerodynamics, uh, we're not doing any plane stuff just yet, I don't think. Uh, when do we get the space shuttle parts? That's not for a little while, is it? Not for like high altitude flight, maybe? Um, okay, there we go, we get the B9. Space Shuttle parts. Yeah, so we get some Space Shuttle parts then. We can make a small Space Shuttle, but I think we'd have to get... Um, maybe it's Heavy Aerodynamics, we get the stock. Yeah, Heavy Aerodynamics, we get the stock Space Shuttle parts. Okay, so uh, it'll be a little while yet before we have a Space Shuttle. I am definitely going to build a Space Shuttle, though. We get the Grabber unit. Mm, that's not too helpful just yet. Specialized Construction. Uh, we get Interstage Adapters. Do we get 3.75 meter fuel tanks, actually? Let's have a look. Advanced fuel systems. We get 2.5 meter ones. No 3. Point, yeah, no 3.75. That's not until their large volume containment. Precision propulsion. Yeah, we don't need any of that just yet. Okay. So, hmm. A lot of this stuff isn't actually all that useful just yet. We don't even have the larger docking ports yet, which is annoying. Uh, none of these techs have the large docking ports, which would be nice. Would be rather nice, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Heat management, blah, 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 blah. Logistics. Just having a look to see where the docking ports are. I know we've got the small docking ports, but the larger ones would certainly be nice. It won't be an unmanned tech. Um, surely it'd be like somewhere around here, like advanced actuators. Nope, that's a forklift. We don't need a forklift in space. 
I don't know. It's somewhere. We don't have them just yet. Anyway, uh, but I think what we are going to go for is we can get a couple of these, actually. So we'll get advanced exploration, better ladders, mobile processing lab. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, yeah, we'll grab the better ladders and the most mobile processing lab. There we go. Wonderful. Uh, we will grab precision engineering. Make sure we get the relay antenna. Make sure we get ourselves the science storage device. Uh, the rest of that stuff. <laughs> Explosives. Hello. Um, yep, yeah, may maybe not. Maybe not just yet. And some better communitrons, but we're not making too many probes just yet. Heat management, eh. Specialized control, could be useful. Advanced landing, mm, could be useful in a bit. But I think we're going to go for some specialized construction. There we go. Uh, we'll purchase whatever parts we need from that. I don't think we really need any just yet. No, we don't. Um, and maybe... Advanced fuel systems. Oh, we don't have enough science. Okay, right. Let's go back to Guardian. And this time, let's do it. Let's do it right. Oh, wait. There's the docking port. Clampatron docking port. There we go. It was in specialized construction all along. Hiding near the bottom. Grab ourselves the uh, stack separator as well. That's quite useful. There we go. That makes things easier. We've also got some better fairings. Actually, this is a much better tech node than I thought it was. Okay. Awesome. We don't actually end up using that docking port or the stack separator because I designed this rocket, the Griffin Y, which is our Apollo style launch vehicle. Before I actually uh, did that mission, I designed it originally for my first mission to Guardian, but then of course I realized that I was well past the ton limit of the level two launch pad. So I had to scale it down to make the Griffin one. Now this vehicle is actually fully reusable, well not fully reusable, the first stage and those two boosters that we just decoupled are actually reusable, hence why I had to check the crass messages there when they had a little bit of an explosion when we separated one of the boosters, but thankfully it was just the separator that got destroyed and nothing particularly important. So once our first stage has burnt out, we decouple it, make sure we don't destroy the probe core which is at the top of it, just throttling up the engine gently. I'm using this very, very efficient and pretty decent thrust uh, high altitude sort of upper stage engine thankfully provided by KW Rocketry. I do love KW Rocketry. That's just a bit more variety when it comes to picking your engines. In stock KSP, you pretty much just got one engine for every eventuality. You know, it gives you a bit more a bit more options. I do like that. A bit more options, a few more options. Let's actually try and speak English properly. Now, you're probably noticing we've already got two people on this mission, and we're heading towards a vehicle in orbit. That's because we took a rescue contract. We're rescuing Donning Kerman, who's been stuck in orbit, probably from some kind of rival space agency. As I said, this isn't a united effort. We just happen to be the only people actually interested in saving Kerbal Kind and not making money. But before we head on to rescue Donning, we have to recover these boosters. Now, they're both close enough to each other that we can actually recover both of them at once. You don't have to swap to one, recover it, then swap to the other one and recover it. We can just uh, warp down with both of them since they don't drift too far apart. Uh, thankfully, we, well, we don't actually have any fuel left in these at all, but uh, thankfully, we actually have enough parachutes on them. And they're light enough that it doesn't particularly matter. These fall close enough to the space center that we maintain control of them. For some reason, our satellite network still isn't working. I need to have a look at it. I don't, don't know why. They have relay antennas on them, and I did extend all the antennas. Um, so I don't know, but we recovered those just fine and then we have to move on to recover the main booster engine Now this one we have left a bit of fuel in because I don't know whether this can actually survive <laughs> Just landing on parachutes. Of course, this is a big mainsail engine because we need a lot more power in our first stages now They are quite expensive, but since we're recovering them It doesn't particularly matter the thing about launching an Apollo style mission is it is a more efficient way to do it with a separate lander and the separate command module but you need to have a much more powerful first stage to get all that stuff into orbit in the first place. So we drift through, we actually pull our parachutes a little late here, but uh, we do manage to pull them in time. Of course, I set, that, set them to deploy automatically, and thankfully they deploy just in time. But once again, we've lost communication. You see, I'm really perplexed by this. We are, I, I think maybe we're just out of range of the satellite. I don't know. Look, we've got the, the lines of communication. Why aren't they working? I don't know. But still, we recover it on parachutes, and all is well. And now it's time to plot our maneuver to rescue Donning. We kind of overbuilt this, mainly because well, I didn't want to have a repeat of the fiasco of our last 
mission, uh, Griffin 1. Griffin 2, yeah, I've, I've built it with quite a bit of wiggle room in mind, especially since we're rescuing someone from, or from orbit as well. So we're still using our upper stage, uh, our second stage engine, to do these maneuvers, which does mean it takes a little while to rotate the spacecraft, but we have some reaction control systems and such, so it's not too much of a problem. Uh, we just orbit around once, and then we get ourselves close to donning. It's not too much of a problem. I've done... <laughs> orbital rendezvous so many times that it's it's just like second nature to me. I know some people who haven't done it ever before in Kerbal Space Program, they look at this and they're like, you must be some kind of god. I remember when I, um, before I'd ever docked anything in space, I, 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 did, I had no idea how to go about it. Um, and watching like Scott Manley on YouTube, my mind was blown. But really, once you've done it enough times, it, it's really not too difficult. Thankfully, Donning's in a capsule we can actually get him out of. Unlike Bonnie Kerman, who was stuck in a goddamn capsule without a hatch, which is uh, particularly amusing and frustrating. But sure enough, we plot our maneuver to Guardian, and we're not going to waste this second stage. We could deorbit it into the atmosphere, but hey, what did Kessler Syndrome ever do to anyone? I kind of find Kessler Syndrome in KSB to be quite fun, you know, dodging debris. I don't know, you're never actually going to get hit by something in KSB, so it's not too much of a problem. We run out of fuel uh, halfway through our burn, and now, of course, we need to actually separate the lander, turn around, and dock it. So we transfer a Kerbal into it, but then I realise we only have one pilot, and we don't have any probe cores on either the command module or the lander, so we don't have any stability assist. And also the shroud, for some reason, the engine shroud got stuck onto it, so we, <laughs> we had to quick save and reload to get rid of that. But although we have a stability assist here on the command module, yeah, that, that lander doesn't have any kind of automatic control. So what we do is we set the command module heading towards the lander. Thank God we had stability assist on at least one of these. And we just move and we try and keep the lander roughly orientated. Surprisingly, it works and we managed to get them docked together. You see we're actually using the little docking ports, the uh, Clampertron Juniors, because as I said, I built this before I actually unlocked the tech which gave us the larger docking ports. But it doesn't really matter. They work just the same. So, sure enough, we continue our burn. We probably should have left a little bit more wiggle room, started our burn a bit earlier. I didn't know how long this would take or if we'd be able to do the entire burn the second stage but it's fine we get our apoapsis up to guardian without any issues a lot of people have mentioned to me like oh why aren't you using better burn time or kerbal engineer or mech jeb i don't want ksp to play itself we see we get the beautiful shot there that was in the 2017 montage i probably shouldn't have included it because this is coming out in 2018 i guess i recorded it in 2017 but yeah anyway so i, I don't want ksp to play itself mech jeb kerbal engineer they make the game a lot easier and I don't know, to me, less fun. They give you all the information that you need, and basically the missions just fly themselves. If we had Mech Jeb and Kerbal Engineer calculating all our Delta V requirements, we wouldn't have had, you know, frustrated yet pretty amusing fiascos like running out of fuel and sending rescue missions. It just makes the game so much more fun if you play it as close to stock as possible. You know, I'm trying to make this playthrough quite difficult, you know, with all the difficulty settings and such, and I feel. That would be counteracted if I got Kerbal Engineer and MechGem and all these missions which automate everything and give you all the information you need and exactly when to start your burns and... It's just like... Autopilot. The game plays itself. It's like watching a cutscene, you know. So, I don't know. It's less fun for me. You know, the, the whole key to Kerbal Space Program is launching rockets and enjoying that. If, you know, you use MechGem to launch your rockets for you, what's the bloody point in playing? <laughs> But anyway, we head down to the surface with Gregly, our resident scientist, and of course Katrina, because this is a new rocket, so she has to be the first to test it. And we head down on towards the surface. We've got loads of fuel to play around with, of course. So we land relatively gently on the surface, and we even have enough to do a little skip to another biome in the next episode. We have a little bit of a glitch uh, whereby we select our experiments and then it just says data accumulated. It takes it without giving us the message. So we have to press review data to look at them, uh, which is a little bit annoying. But yeah, we get a fun little message about how the sand would go well on the sandcastle back home. And we get our EVA report on our surface sample before realizing, oh, we forgot to put the flag out. Okay, let's move forward. Let's extend the flag. And there we go. At this point, it occurs to me that we left a complete stranger from another space program in our command module. Uh, so I kind of hope it's still there when we get back to orbit. He could have just nicked it and headed back on home and stolen a multi-million <laughs> dollar uh, command module. But uh, I guess we'll find out if it's still there in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.